Hey, good Friday morning, everybody. It's a Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. A lot to talk about today. We've got a lot of rain heading our way next week. Two tropical systems and the rain coming from neither of them, probably. So let me explain. This is a pretty interesting setup here. So a couple things going on. We're getting towards the peak of hurricane season. So we're starting to see the tropics get active. You know about Fred, which I'll talk about in a minute. Fred is not very impressive, but we've got a new system out here, which is uh, what we call potential tropical cyclone seven so this would be eventually grace if it gets a name still pretty far out there i don't want to get too focused on there but i will show you in a minute but what's interesting for the weekend is you know a lot of people are like oh fred's going to soak us but the thing is we're going to see a ton of rain but not from fred we've got this front here which is going to drop down over the carolinas and probably stall somewhere in here we've got the good old bermuda high off the east coast here its flow is clockwise remember so it's pumping in moisture. There's a weak upper low here, which is actually shearing off some of the storms with Fred that's spinning like this. And this is all pumping moisture into the region, even without Fred in the picture. So when you hear about this rain, it's not directly associated with Fred. It's not that Fred couldn't add some rain to it. We're going to see rain this weekend, even without Fred. So if I were to put the ingredients in there, stalled front, high pressure off the east coast, low pressure, tropical moisture. That's all you need for rain. The thing that Fred's doing, Fred is just getting pulled into this mess because of the same steering current. So if anything, it's these other mechanisms that is driving Fred into the region more so than Fred adding rain to the situation. So let's talk about Fred. Let's zoom in real quickly on Fred down here because it's struggling. I'll be honest with you, Fred is barely a tropical system. I mean, it is really struggling. Look at the visible image. This image tells me a lot. So this is the close-up image. There's the circulation right there. You see it? It's what we call naked, which means there's no storms over the center. It's actually moving back over Cuba. That's not good news. All the storms are way down here to the south and east. Also notice you can detect that, that shear. There's southwesterly shear. Notice the high clouds getting blown off in this direction while the low clouds are going this direction. Um, that's not really healthy for a, a tropical system. You want to see this venting or this outflow going in all directions, either north and south helps, but that is not a healthy looking system. So there's a small chance that Fred dissipates. There's still that possibility. And um, I would even say, based on the guidance here, we're probably going to see the system drift to the west. The weak system is going to kind of get steered a little bit easier than a stronger system so you're starting to see a lot of the guidance going even further west of us so um, not a direct impact on us and probably the only thing we're going to see is an enhancement of the flow of tropical air over the region the intensity guidance is pretty much flat um, either weak tropical storm or barely a tropical depression so a really weak system overall and i'll show you the the uh, the spaghetti plots all shifting pretty far to the west now which means we're probably not going to see much in the way of um, significant impacts here except for the added rainfall. So let's talk about that rainfall because what's going to happen is that as this moisture comes north and the moisture from the upper low and the high, it's going to provide a ton of rain across the Carolinas. And we're going to see probably some of the heaviest rain we've seen in a while. So here's a look at the, the seven day rainfall forecast. You see the big bullseye over Florida. So this is primarily driven by Fred down here. But notice the secondary bullseye up here over the Western Carolinas, that's not directly associated. There's a little bit of a cutoff here because of the influence of the, the stalled front. So what's going to happen is this is a close up view is this moisture being pumped back towards the West is actually going to hit the mountains and the mountains will act like a stalled front as well. It'll lift that tropical air and create showers and storms on the Eastern facing slopes and Southeastern facing slopes. And create rain it's like the reverse of our northwest flow snow that we get in the winter when we get winds out of the northwest and we get snow near the tennessee line well this is the tropical reverse of that southeast winds creating heavy rain instead of snow on the eastern facing slopes notice it's actually going to be a better week out at the outer banks and the coast less rain out there than in the western carolina so let me show you the water vapor loop because you can see how this is all going to unfold uh, you see our front or our trough you see our upper low, you see Fred, and you see the high off the East Coast, really all driving this and heading our way. So let me really quickly pop on um, our forecast here. We'll put on the tracks just to show you the tracks of everything, the forecast cone. 
Um, you can see the new track takes us pretty far to the west into the middle of next week. We're not actually even in the cone of the depression. Uh, but our new system developing down here, which I'm kind of interested, they haven't put out the forecast yet. But this is going to be potential tropical cyclone 7. And that one we'll have to watch a little closer because that one might stay east of Florida and eventually influence uh, maybe coastal sections of the Carolinas. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. This is late next week into next weekend. Um, just something to keep in mind. But Fred, probably not the biggest issue for us. It's just going to be this heavy rain coming in through the weekend. And some of the totals could be pretty impressive. In fact, if you look at this, uh, some of the totals in the mountains are still probably between about four to eight inches, localized eight. And then across the Piedmont, you're looking at more in the two to maybe four inch range. So we're going to see rain, but it's not necessarily associated with Fred in this case. It's associated with the weather pattern setting up that steering Fred into the region. And then we'll start talking about potential tropical cyclone seven, which eventually is future grace. That one actually probably has a little bit more potential um, to produce some issues for us. I'm going to switch to that real quickly as, I, as I'm talking to you. So we're going to go to the invest here. Um, I'll show you the satellite image. So that's that's potential tropical cyclone seven flying along there. And just to show you the, the plots on there. Yeah, well, that's I, sorry. I picked the wrong storm. Let's go back. I picked the wrong system. I don't know why it keeps picking. Why are you picking Fred? We don't want Fred. We want Invest. There we go. So here's the Invest. There's the future intensity guidance. So slow but steady intensification over the next uh, six to seven days could be a hurricane by maybe late next week. And if we look at the spaghetti plots real quickly, you kind of see the track maybe to the southern Bahamas by Thursday of next week. So something to keep an eye on. Two systems out there, even though Fred is the closest to us, I actually think seven could be a bigger threat down the road. Get ready for a soggy week next week, scattered showers and storms. It won't rain the entire time, but we're going to get a good batch of rain, especially in the Western Carolinas.